my Wireshark friends. Welcome to another video on Wireshark and one of its features. You'll find all of these little features in our videos on this channel. In this particular one, I want to share with you a really powerful capability of Wireshark without going on and on about it for, you know, 30 or 40 minutes. So I'll just sort of skim the surface. This is going to be on Wireshark Display Filter Macros. Okay, so let's jump in. Um, so I'm going to start up Wireshark here. And uh, I'm going to do a little packet capture. So let's select our Ethernet interface and start a packet capture. Notice I am in my default profile. We can watch the number of packets here. And we'll let this go to about two or 300 packets. And hopefully there'll be stuff there that I can use. And let's see. All right, so we're at about two or 300 packets or so. All right, so what I'm gonna do is stop the capture. And I wanna show you how to use display filter macros. Now we're gonna keep this really, really simple. And in the article that I've linked in the description, I go into much more detail. In fact, in that article, I give you a whole bunch of views of display filter macro captures. So I would encourage you to play and get more deeply acquainted with this feature. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do it very simple. Now, if I wanted to do a display filter for an IP address, Pretty much everyone who's used Wireshark for more than a day learns that there's a display filter called IP.ADDR equals equals 192.168.1.1, right? And if I do a filter for this, all of the packets that now contain that address, be it in the source or the destination, right, those packets would show up. Now here, it's just showing up a source address from that default gateway, okay? Which is fine, it worked perfectly. But what if I wanted to make this more flexible? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear this filter and we're gonna jump back to the top and then I'm gonna go to analyze and then display filter macros. Now you can see this is my default profile and I do not have any display filter macros in my profile. And, and by the way, this is a very important point. You can create different display filter macros for different profiles. So if you're working for instance with voice over IP, maybe you would have display filter macros specific to voice over IP. And you would have that in your voice over IP profiles. If you're working with TCP, you might have some display filter macros for that. Now, I've got a video on how you create different profiles, and I'll link that above. So if you want to check that out after you watch this, please feel free to do so. All right. So what we can do here, and this follows the kind of screen GUI nomenclature that is on every one of Wireshark's, you know, list creation tools, whether it be bookmarks or whatever, you can see here we can hit the plus button, minus, copy, put them in different orders and so forth, right? So I'm going to click the little plus button and you can see there I'm being given an opportunity to put the name of the macro. Now I'm going to call it IPA, standing for IP address, okay? And then I'm going to hit the tab button. Now I'm in the text area. And in the text area is where we can put the macro syntax. In this case, it's going to look a lot like a display filter, ip.addr equals equals. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a variable, dollars one. Okay. All right. And now I'm going to say, okay. So now if I go to analyze, display filter macros, we can see it's there. Now what this means, that it now that it's there in that list, is this is now available to me in the display filter area. So again, dollars one is essentially that variable, okay? So what I wanna say is this, I wanna, and you'll always follow this format. You'll say dollars, curly brackets, you'll put the name of the display macro, display filter macro, so IPA, and then you're going to say the address. So let's put in 192.168.1.250 this time. 
and close curly brackets. Now you'll see the background turns green, which means that Wireshark is happy with this. And if I hit the apply button or enter, now I'm getting to see all the packets that have IP address 192.168.1.250. Okay, so my macro works. And the cool thing here is I just, you know, can change the address, right? And now we're looking at all the 192.168.1.1 packets. Now, all right, you're probably saying to yourself, wait a minute, Andy, that really wasn't very complicated, right? And I don't really see, I mean, having to remember the dollars and having to remember the curly brackets. I mean, wouldn't it be just easier to type ip.addr equals equals? And the answer is yes, right? But but for an from an example standpoint, now you sort of understand the format of this. All right, so where this comes in handy is when you have much more complex display filters, okay? So for example, let's say that we added this. Let's clear this filter and let's go back up to the display filter macros. We'll add a second one. This one, I'm gonna call it IP and P, okay? So IPAP, meaning that this time I'm gonna have, as you will see, two different IP addresses. So I'm gonna say IP.ADDR equals equals dollars one just like I had before and okay IP dot a d d r equals whoops equals equals dollars two okay so I have two variables now in this particular macro I'm going to say okay so now watch this right so now what I do is I put the dollars curly bracket IPAP which is my macro name, and then the colon. And now I can put the two IP addresses, 192.168.1.1. And let's, uh, oh, the second one or any then following variables have to be separated with a semicolon, okay? And let's put in uh, 192.168.1.255 and see what we get here. Again, close curly brackets. You'll notice that the format is correct. I most often make a mistake putting a comma between the two. Again, you put the semicolon between the two. But certainly typing this is a lot less typing that if I were to type out that full ip.addr equals equals then the IP address and and right etc. I mean you can you can start to see now where this is going to take less. So let's apply that. And yeah, indeed, right? We don't get any matching packets for this. But you can see how this really helps us, okay? All right, so let's uh, go ahead and you know clear everything out and jump back up to the top of our packet capture. I now wanna show you another way that you can use these display filter macros. So again, I'm gonna go to analyze display filter macros. And this time I'm gonna add one that I will call, let's call it something like uh, DNS request. Okay, so DNS RQ. In the actual macro, what I'm gonna say is that this is gonna be with the DNS dot flags dot response equals equals zero. So it's not a response, right? That that makes it a request, okay? And I'm gonna say, okay. So now up here, all I have to do is say dollars, curly brackets, DNS, uh, can't type all of a sudden, DNS request. All right, so that's a valid. And look at that, just like that, I have found all the DNS requests. So I didn't have to type all of that syntax for dns.flags.response equals equals zero. I was simply able to type this uh, because I know it's an existing macro in this particular profile. So again, you can give these macros names that stand for commonly typed display filter syntaxes. This is yet another way 
to leverage Wireshark's display filter macros. There's a whole bunch more in the article that I've linked below. Please play with this. Please add them to your profiles. Remember, this is now part of my default profile, and now I can use these over and over and over. And I've got a bunch of great examples of that in the article. Hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you will leverage display filter macros. Remember, capture every day. See you in the next video.